Uh, good afternoon. The next item of business is portfolio questions on transport infrastructure and connectivity. Question one, Brian Whittle. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to ensure that rural transport, or, or sorry, public transport in rural areas, has sufficient capacity to meet demand. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson, please. As we move through the phases of the government's route map, we need to recognise that it will not be possible to fully satisfy demand for public transport. However, we are working with our operators with the aim that transport provision is as fair and sustainable as possible. That is why people should first consider if their travel is necessary, then if the journey could be completed by walking, wheeling or cycling. People should always consider if public transport is the right choice for their journey, be mindful of the guidance and restrictions, plan ahead and to avoid peak times. Brian Whistle. Uh, I can thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer, but you will be aware of the transport challenges in rural areas where active travel options are probably less likely to get to work. If the constituent does not have a car, then bus and rail travel is essential. So how will the Cabinet Secretary ensure that public transport routes not only remain open, but have sufficient investments to further connect these rural communities? Cabinet Secretary, please. Well, as a member may be aware, we have already taken decisive action to help to support public, uh, public transport providers uh, through providing funding to bus operators across the country by rolling forward the provision for concessionary travel and also through the BSOL grant. And the BSOL grant in particular helps to support those within rural areas as it is allocated on a mileage basis. And normally, bus operators, in particular in rural areas, cover larger distances. So we are providing that financial support to bus operators at the present time to help to support them and to sustain the existing services which are presently being provided. And we will continue to engage with them to look at what further measures can be provided to support them in looking at increasing services. Equally, we have also put in a, an arrangement with rail services through the Emergency Measures Agreement, which is helping to support the provision of rail services. As of Monday of next week, uh, there will be a further increase in capacity on the rail network, which will see a significant uplift in the number of seats available on a daily basis across the transport network. That will help to support those in rural areas and also in urban areas to make sure that we meet as much of the demand as we can, given the constraints that public transport will experience as a result of having to maintain the two-meter physical distancing rule. Question two, Edward Mountain. Thank, thank you, Presiding Officer, to ask the Scottish Government when physical work will start with the delivery of Lot 1 of the R100 high-speed broadband programme. Minister Paul Wheelhouse, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The contract award for Lot 1 or the North Lot of our Reaching 100% programme is on hold pending the outcome of a legal challenge from GigaClear Limited. Uh, physical work will start as soon as possible following the conclusion of proceedings. In the meantime, we are developing a Scottish broadband voucher scheme for which anyone who will not have a superfast broadband connection delivered through the R100 contracts or delivered commercially by the end of 2021 will be eligible. This approach aims to honour our commitment on access to superfast broadband by the end of 2021. Edward Mountain, please. Thank you, Minister, for that answer. I mean, the people in the Highlands, uh, Minister, are frustrated with the Scottish Government's failure to deliver on their promise of broadband by 2021. So, Minister, my simple question is, without blaming anyone else, when will you deliver superfast broadband in the Highlands, as you promised? Is it 2026 or 2027? Minister? <coughs> um, <laughs> it's difficult to know where to start to respond to presiding officer. Mr. Mountain, just don't question. Make it, excuse me, just don't make it too long. Apologies, uh, presiding officer. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mountain's uh, question, uh, I think, is founded in a, a false premise that uh, looking at um, a, the, the situation as being something which has had no progress whatsoever. In terms of Highland Council, for example, which was uh, close to Mr. Mountain's heart, we have seen progress in January 2014, where we had 20.3% of premises could have 
superfast access to 80.5% by June of this year, so a 60% increase, and that's a far faster rate of increase than is uh, present across the UK as a whole. As Mr Mountain knows, uh, that broadband provision, uh, as with all telecoms, is a reserved matter, and the Scottish Government is intervening to address market failure. The R100 programme will deliver. Uh, we are clearly uh, delayed by the, uh, the current legal proceedings, uh, and we, we cannot uh, fast-track that. We have to wait for the outcome of that. But I want to assure Mr Mountain and anyone uh, he represents in the Highlands and Islands that they will be eligible for the voucher funding, which will be available from this summer onwards. And because of the online checker that we will be developing to provide information at premises level, uh, his constituents should be able to tell whether they are eligible for R100, when R100 will be delivering to their premises, and if that is likely to be beyond the end of 2021, we will be able to use the voucher funding to deliver a solution for them. Yes. I know that was a, a, a needed answer, but could I have them more briefly, briefly please? A uh, brief uh, supplement from Liam MacArthur, please. The lockdowns cruelly exposed the digital divide that still exists between the haves and the have-nots. My constituents in Hoy, for example, have highlighted the poor service they have been getting, if any at all, for which they pay full cost. So, what assurances can the Minister uh, provide that the delayed implementation of R100 will pr prioritise rollout in those areas, such as Orkney, with the lowest level of coverage in the country. Minister, thank you, Presiding Officer. That's a very uh, fair, fair point that Leah MacArthur raises. We, we are acutely aware of how important digital connectivity has been, not just for members of the chamber, uh, but for all our constituents in trying to address challenges of, of uh, continuing to homework or homeschool their children or access telehealth in areas such as Orkney. And uh, so, therefore, the importance of uh, investment in infrastructure in Orkney, as in other rural and island communities, is, is not lost in me or my colleagues in the Scottish Government. We are, I want to reassure Mr MacArthur, looking at how, in the recovery plan, we can prioritise investment to try and address areas of poor coverage, both on mobile and broadband. And uh, There are a, a couple of sites in, in Orkney area that will hopefully benefit from the S4GI programme as well, on the mobile connectivity site in, uh, in uh, Rackwick and Deerness, which hopefully I can Lays with Mr. MacArthur about, but uh, to reassure him, uh, it's very much a, a point that is well made. We well understand the benefits of, of digital infrastructure, and we are keen to make sure we address poor coverage in areas such as Orkney. Right, question three, Bill Bowman, please. To Mr. ask the Bowman. Scottish government, to ask the Scottish government what steps it is taking to ensure that there will be sufficient capacity and operators for school buses to operate when schools return in mid-August. Cabinet Secretary, please. Uh, my colleague, the Deputy First Minister, published guidance for local authorities on school transport to support the reopening of schools in August. It makes clear that local authority transport teams should work closely with transport operators to assess the capacity that will be needed to meet the transport needs of pupils in their areas. The Scottish Government is working closely with local authorities and other transport stakeholders through the Education Recovery Group to support the reopening of schools. This includes building our understanding of the practical and financial issues local authorities and their partners will face. A moment, please. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. It is obvious that toiling transport infrastructure is of great concern at all levels of education. And Dean Angus College Students Association have contacted me to say shrinking local bus timetables, services and capacity will severely impact students living in rural areas as the only mode of transport to campuses and will also impact students on vocational courses and those on work placements. What will the Cabinet Secretary do to combat this issue and ensure that students are not disadvantaged in their education because of where they live? Cabinet Secretary, please. A Deputy Secretary, also the funding which we are providing to bus services at the present moment is to help to support and sustain the bus sector in order to maintain services to a level through our public service contract which we have in place for them. Uh, the purpose behind that is to make sure that we maintain a level of bus services across the whole of the network in both urban and in rural areas, particularly to support key uh, workers. As we go forward, we will clearly be looking to see what further assistance we can provide to bus operators in order to expand and to increase capacity 
across their networks. That, of course, will help to support those students who, uh, later in the summer, will hopefully be able to return to college uh, and to be able to make use of bus services. However, having said that, uh, given the, the need for physical distancing to be maintained on the public transport network, uh, capacity will be considerably constrained over an, ex an extended period of time. And it's important that education settings look at the arrangements they're putting in place to help to support students in home learning alongside campus-based learning to help to assist them to minimise the need to make sure to minimise need to travel on public transport. Question for Rachel Hamilton. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to roll out superfast broadband and how this has been impacted by the COVID-19 outbreak. Minister, please. Thank you. Um, all regulatory and le legislative responsibility for telecommunications rests with UK ministers. However, to improve coverage and address obvious market failure, building on the success of the 463 million Digital Scotland Superfast Broadband programme, our 600 million reaching 100 per cent programme has been developed to support every home and business in Scotland having access to superfast broadband. Both programmes have been impacted by lockdown restrictions, but have not stalled completely, with some new build progressing and maintenance of critical digital infrastructure has continued throughout the lockdown. I want to thank all those telecoms uh, key workers for helping keep everyone connected through this crisis. Uh, broadband connectivity is at the forefront of our plans for a green economic recovery, and there will be a gradual ramp up in new build activity as we move through the phases of Scotland's route map. Uh, Rachel Hamilton, please. I thank the Minister for that answer. Can I clarify, as according to the Minister's answer to my written question this week, whether he will commit to reporting to Parliament how the timescale of the physical deployment phase of R100 will be affected? taking into account safe working practices in the context of the need to prevent transmission of coronavirus? Minister, please. I certainly think that is a reasonable request from uh, Rachel Hamilton. I am keen to keep uh, Ms Hamilton and, and other colleagues in the Parliament updated on progress. Our current estimates are that for the South uh, Law area, that physical build may start uh, in July. Uh, but obviously, we are having to, as Ms Hamilton has uh, outlined, take account of the, the need for uh, modified working practices within the sector and engaging with uh, BT and Openreach and, and, and reaching that uh, conclusion. We hope that the central law area may resume work in August and September. Uh, there has been ongoing survey work throughout the COVID-19 period and a lot of desk-based work, which has prevented the work stalling completely. But uh, we'll try and keep members such as Ms Hamilton well informed of, of what's happening in terms of the physical build-out. Yes, can I, I can I ask for shorter answers, please. I've got very little time left, and I've three people wanting to ask questions. Question six, Gordon Lindhurst, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, my question is to ask the Scottish Government what its position is on whether a transport company it owns should pressure a witness to withdraw his evidence given before a parliamentary committee. Minister. Uh, ministers fully support the need for committee witnesses to be free to present any evidence they wish to. Uh, it's for the Parliament's committees to scrutinise the witnesses, to ensure clarity and corroboration of evidence, and I'm confident that the committees of this Parliament take that responsibility seriously and perform their role very effectively in that regard. Gordon Lindhurst. Will the government write to Caledonian Maritime Assets Limited, a company in which they are the sole shareholder, and advise them that it is improper to try and place pressure on witnesses who give evidence to parliamentary committees? And secondly, regarding the two ferries being constructed by Ferguson Marine Limited, will the Cabinet Secretary confirm the latest updated figures with respect to the total costs and overall timetable for delivery? Minister? On the on the first point, uh, presiding officer, uh, certainly will I think uh, the the organisation CMAL are, are well aware that we uh, uh, wouldn't have uh, done the, the the step taken the step of writing to the committee. I've made clear that it is a matter for them. Uh, but uh, while we were unhappy with some of the remarks that were made in the sessions, our our officials were able to address that in a subsequent evidence session, which is why. Uh, I made my point in the original answer that the committee I know is fair in how it handles these matters and allows the government to respond where comments are made. So we are comfortable that that point has been addressed. 
Uh, but as to the second point, I will uh, get in touch with Mr Lindhurst, but in writing with the latest position on the financial outturn for A to one and two, uh, if that would be helpful, presiding officer. Thank you very much. Question seven, James Dornan. To ask the Scottish Government how it supports people in making sustainable travel choices. Cabinet Secretary. We have uh, clearly set out our sustainable travel hierarchy within the National Transport Strategy to promote walking, cycling and public transport in preference to single occupancy car use. The COVID-19 emergency does not change our advocacy of the hierarchy. We have continued to invest in active public and shared transport solutions, which provide healthy and environmental journey options to single occupancy car journeys. Local authorities have embraced the new £30 million Spaces for People programme to deliver bold and ambitious temporary active travel measures to allow people to physically distance while travelling or exercising. Graeme uh, Dorman, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, we know that people should not be travelling long distances for leisure or exercise at this stage, but how is the Scottish Government engaging with those local authorities to encourage more people to take up active travel, particularly given the benefits to physical and mental health as well as the environment? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Mr Dornan raises an important issue, and that is why the Scottish Government is grant funding Sustrans Scotland to deliver the Places for Everyone Cycling and Walking Infrastructure programme in partnership with local authorities across the country. We repurposed £30 million of the budget to deliver the Spaces for People Fund to help local authorities to change street layouts and to support physical distancing during the transition out of the COVID-19 lockdown. And as of the 9th of June, 30 of the 32 local authorities have inquired or made claims to the fund, and 26 awards have been made to 17 local authorities worth over £16 million. Sustrans is also currently supporting 10 local authorities on 20 live or proposed projects, and the majority of this support is designed it is around design and community engagement issues. Uh, question 8, Michelle Valentine. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what steps they are taking to ensure public transport is safe and practical for people using it during the COVID-19 outbreak. Cabinet Secretary. We recently published the Transport Transition Plan, which contains comprehensive guidance for our transport operators, staff and for members of the public during the recovery phase of COVID-19. This guidance has been informed by transport operators, COSLA, regional transport partnerships, passenger groups and trade unions, and will be reviewed at a minimum in line with the Scottish Government's regular three-weekly review of lockdown requirements. Michelle Ballantyne. Thank you for that answer. Um, the rules, obviously, that you've recently introduced uh, limit the number of passengers on a bus at any one time to 10 passengers. And whilst this does absolutely fit with the guidelines and appears to be a sensible route to take given the COVID-19 situation, it has caused concern in the bus industry. With First Bus Director Scotland, sorry, First Bus Scotland Director Andrew Jarvie commenting that due to only being able to carry 25% of their capacity, we will very quickly run out of resource, capacity, and money as we progress through the government's plan to lift lockdown measures. Does the Scottish Government recognise this picture of a bus that could end up on its system, that could end up on its knees, and what steps to address the sector's concern about the sustainability that you said was so important in the answer to Brian Whittle's question? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as a member will have heard in my response to Brian Whittle, we move very quickly as a government to take decisive action to support the bus industry with the provision of access to concessionary fare funding and also to BESOL grant funding, because the member raises an important issue, and that is the physical constraints that there will be within the transport sector, and on buses in particular, uh, due to the two-metre physical distancing requirement. We are also engaging with the bus sector to look at what other measures could be put in place to mitigate this. Uh, and At the present time, we have uh, provided funding to ADL in order to look at what adaptions could be made in buses in order to help to increase the number of passengers who can 
access buses, uh, and that piece of research work has been undertaken at pace in order to see whether it could be deployed to increase the number of passengers on buses significantly above the existing capacity constraints. Uh, but we're also engaging with the bus industry to look at what further financial support may be necessary to help to support the industry going forward and to make sure that passenger services are being provided across the country in an equitable fashion. Uh, thank you. That concludes portfolio questions on transport infrastructure and connectivity. I apologise to members who wanted supplementaries. I feel that other members of the questions who have logged in should have the chance to ask them. And I now suspend this meeting until three o'clock. Thank you very much.